हेलो लर्नर्स नमस्कार आई एम प्रज्ञा वेलकमिंग यू इन योर यूट्यूब चैनल इंग्लिश सीकर टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट द वेरी फर्स्ट चैप्टर ऑफ द बुक विस्टास एंड चैप्टर्स टाइटल इज द थर्ड लेवल सो द वेरी फर्स्ट आई विल टेल यू अबाउट द ऑथर अ लिटिल बिट देन अबाउट द समरी ऑफ द चैप्टर सो लेट्स स्टार्ट द ऑथर ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज जैक फिन जैक फिन वॉज बॉर्न इन मैल वॉकी Vince Quines in U.S. or you can say the United States. He was born on second October, nineteen hundred eleven, and he was he was died on fourteenth November, nineteen ninety five. I think that it it is going it is going to be very easy for you to learn both dates. I mean, his birthday was on second October, and his uh, his death anniversary was on. Fourteenth November. So it is going to very easy for all of you to recognize just because these two days are very historical and celebrated in our India in different manner. Second October as Gandhi Jayanti and fourteenth November as Children's Day, the birthday of Chacha Nehru. Okay, so I just tell it to remind you about this thing. Okay, let's see about a little bit about the author. So, Mr. Finney specialized in thrillers and works of science fictions. Uh, two of his novels, The Body Snatchers and Good Neighbor Sam, became the basic of the popular films. But it was Time and Again, which was published in nineteen seventy, that won him a devoted following. The novel about his advertising artist who travels back to the New York of the eighteen eighties eighteen eighties quickly became a cult favorite. So this chapter, the chapter, the third level is also a kind of you can say fiction. So let's start the chapter. What is going to be? Okay, let's see. The chapter started. I mean, the narrator begins in a mock serious manner. Mock means uh, uh, laughingly or uh, with uh, just a, uh, a type of joke. So the writer started. The narrator begins in mock serious manner. The president of New York Center and the New York New Haven and Hartford Railroads uh, will swear on a stack. of time tables that there were only two levels at grand central station but charlie the narrator asserts there are three so this is a, i mean the opening of the chapter is very humorous you can see the poet uh, sorry the writer says that all the authorities who are who belongs who belong to this to who have the authority to provide the time table of the railway station uh, at the railway station related to the trains and uh, the levels so they can swear and can tell us they always tell us that there are two levels but the charlie who is the protagon uh, protagonist of this chapter says that there are three levels he has been on the third level Charlie claimed that he went on the third level. He talked to the psychiatrist friend Sam Vanier about it. He dismissed it as a waking dream fulfillment. He said the narrator was unhappy. He said that the psychiatrist friend of um, Charlie said that he was unhappy. The narrator's wife Louisa was sad. The psychiatrist explained that the modern world was full of insecurity, fear, war, worry, etc. The narrator just wanted to escape. His friend also agreed. His friends also agreed. They thought that his habit of stamp collection was a temporary refusal from a temporary refuse from reality. Charlie was a thirty-one year old. A person or guy, you can say, he was an ordinary guy. One night he wanted to get up to the town, uh, up uh, town of his home to Louisa, his wife. Uh, so he turned into Grand Central Station uh, from uh, Vanderbilt Avenue. He went down the steps of the first level where one could take trains like the twentieth century. Then he. Walked down another flight of stairs to the second level. Suburban trains left from there. He dug into an arched doorway, heading for the subway and get lost. The corridor Charlie was in began 
in clinging at an angle and a slopping downwards he thought that he was wrong but he kept on walking he heard the empty sound of only his own foot steps his only foot steps he didn't uh, pass any one then the tunnel turned sharp left he went down a short flight of stairs and came out on the third level at grand central station for a moment he thought he was back on the second level but the room he saw was a small a smaller there were fewer ticket windows and train gates moreover the information booth in the center was wooden and old looking the man in the booth wore a green i shade and long black sleeves protectors the open flame gas lights were dim and flickering there were brass splinters on the floor there were the brass splinters on the floor there was a glint of light across the station a man pulled a gold watch from his vest pocket the man snapped open the cover glanced at his watch and frowned he wore a derby hat and a black four button suit with tiny laps lapels he had a big black handle handle bar mustaches then charlie looked around he saw that everyone in the station was dressed like 1819 something 1890 something a woman walked in uh, through the train gate he wore a leg of mutton sleeves and Uh, skirt to the top of her height buttoned shoes he also saw a very small career uh, career and avis uh, locomotion with a funnel shaped stack charlie knew that he was back in 1890s he walked over to a newsboy and glanced at the stack of papers at his feet it was the world the lead story in the world said something about president cleveland he knew that the world has not been published for years from the files of the public library he came to know that the date of that issue was june 11 1894 charlie then turned towards his uh, the ticket window he wanted two tickets to galsberg Allison, uh, uh, sorry, Illinois. Uh, one was uh, to be for himself, and the other for his wife, Louisa. The clerk calculated the fare. He glanced at Charlie's uh, funny hat band. Charlie counted out the money. Charlie counted out uh, the money. The clerk stared at Charlie and refused to accept the bill, saying, "That aren't money, Mister." Charlie glanced. at the cash drawer beside him the money was old style bills half aging uh, aging as big as the money being used in those days it was also of different look charlie turned away and got out fast he did not want to go to jail next uh, jail sorry next day the narrator drew 300 dollars out of the bank he went to a coin dealer's shop to buy old money his 300 dollars bought less than 200 in old style he wanted to go back to the ticket counter on the third level to buy two tickets for himself and for his wife to galsberg illinois but he has never again uh, found the corridor corridor that he led to the third level at grand central station anymore charlie told luisa all this she was quite worried she didn't want him to look for the third level anymore after a while charlie stopped it he went back to the stamp collecting but now both of them were looking every weekend because they had proof that the third level was still there His friend Sam Vanier had disappeared nobody knew where but Charlie suspected that he had gone to Galsberg because he used to tell Sam about the place and he said that he liked the sound of the place one night 
Charlie was fussing with his stamp stamp collection. He found a first day cover dated July eighteen eighteen ninety four. The stamp was a six cent dull brown with a picture of President Garfield. There was a paper inside. It was a letter written from Galesburg, Illinois, dated uh, July eighteen nineteen. Uh, sorry, eighteen ninety four, and addresses to Charlie Sam. The writer had found the third level and uh, had been at Gallusburg for two weeks. At that time, he was down the street at the Daily's. Someone was playing a piano. People were all out on the front porch. They were singing, seeing Nally home. He was invited over for Lamanda. Sam asked Charlie and Louisa to come there. He asked them to keep looking till they found the third level. He assured that them that it was that it is. I mean, it uh, that it was worth it. The narrator went to the stamp and coin store. He found he found out that Sam had bought. Eight hundred dollars worth of old style currency that could set him up in a hay feed and grain business. It was something he really wished to do. Some, uh, moreover, in Gallusburg, Illinois, in eighteen ninety four, Sam could not go back to his old business of psychiatrist. Sam, uh, of a psychiat uh, psychiatry. Sam was the narrator's psychiatrist. He he was his friend. So this was the story. In my next video, I will provide you the Hindi summary of this chapter. Till then, stay connected and stay tuned. Thank you.